Uh, hello everyone. Uh, uh, this is Professor Mo. Uh, I am uh, uh, ready to create uh, an assembly of uh, components that we have created for the uh, project called the Shock Assembly. So I'm going to show you a shortcut of how to assemble components so that it's fully constrained and then we can um, create exploded views from the assembly and then from exploded views we can save it uh, so that we can transfer it to the b size uh, sheet of paper and i'm going to show you how to create bill of materials plus uh, a balloon so that's attached to each component of the exploded views of the shock assembly okay great so let's just do this we're gonna go new and then we're gonna click on this tab here or the radio button called assembly because by default is a part solid so we're gonna click on assembly and we're gonna give a name i will say you know assembly or the shock assembly okay um or just say uh assembly okay that's good. Now um, we can just say OK. And everything is ready to go. And I have the plane in here. So I'm going to go to assembly right here and then click on that. And I'm going to bring so you have all your components like a t nine parts that all, and you have already created is ready to go. And I'm assuming that uh, you know how to create each part of the um, shock assembly and i have uh, 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 created videos for some of these components uh, hopefully you have uh, done the same thing and you're ready to do the assembly okay so my goal is to teach you to show you how you can assemble these components when for the project called the shock assembly okay let's do this we're going to start with the u support okay we're going to double click and we have the u support in here all right, one thing you should do is when you bring the first um, component, which is the U support, uh, try to um, say uh, it says no constraints at this time, and you have all this, you know, uh, the wheels or status. So I'm going to turn it off for clarity temporarily. And then I am going to click on the uh, coordinate. And maybe I can click on the another plane and, and is it partially constrained? And then I have this here, or maybe if I go and use another constraint, is this partially constrained, but that's good enough, you know, and uh, no problem. And then I can, it's this constraint is invalid and um, uh, no need to, uh, so I'm gonna cancel. Okay, I'm going to cancel that because normally I just leave it, you know, alone and I don't need to worry about that. So uh, let me just uh, uh, go to um, uh, assembly and then we say the uh, use support. Okay, use support. Okay, no problem. And all we have to do is turn off all this plane. I'm going to turn it off. The only thing you wanted to keep it on is the axis. Okay, that's all you need to do. And then you say, okay, check. All right, so we have created, uh, okay, the, the base feature or the use support. And next we're going to say assembly. Okay, assembly. And we're gonna bring next one is a bushing. Okay, we're gonna say bushing. We're gonna click, double click on bushing. And you can see that I can move them, I can use this and grab this here and move it to this location turn it off um, make sure that it says automatics here just watch this window and say yes okay click on the axis and you want that to be aligned with this axis okay for the axis here and then next you say coincident you click on coincident you want to coincide this surface and then go back to where it says automatics you click on coincident again you coincide with that surface and you can see that this is fully constrained okay fully constrained all right perfect so we're gonna say check all right so we have the first um, you know 
um, uh, uh, the second component uh, that is uh, called bushing, we just constrain it uh, to this surface here. So the hole is aligned or uh, with the, the hole of the bushing is aligned with the hole of the U support. So everything is good to go. Now we go and bring another, uh, this, uh, another bushing, okay? So we can bring, um, again, double click, and then we have the bushing in here. And you can see that this is, you can move them here. And now you automatic is on, or we call it align. We can align this center axis, center line for that hole with this center line. And then you just make sure you click on the arrow here and you click on coincident and you coincide uh, this surface and then coincide, coincide that with this surface. And then you reverse the, you know, you reverse it. You, so you flip it, you flip that, and that's what we have. And it's fully constrained, okay? Fully constrained, perfect. So now we have those two bushings uh, perfectly um, aligned. And next we're gonna bring pivot, okay? We're gonna bring pivot and double click. And this is the, that's our uh, pivot. And okay, we're gonna just leave it there. And I'm going to uh, click on this axis here, align with this axis. All right, so far so good. And then you go back to this window, always watch this window here. And then you click on coincident. You're gonna coincide, okay? I'm gonna just rotate them so you can see it. I'm gonna coincide this surface. And don't forget to click on coincident again, coincide that with uh, this surface here. All right, so. Uh, it says fully constrained because for a pivot in order to stay in a horizontal point position or horizontal with respect to this surface here or parallel to the surface, you have to impose another constraint, okay? Otherwise, it's going to flip. So I'm going to go to uh, placement. I'm going to go to placement. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to click on new constraint. And then I'm going to click on um, maybe fix or parallel. Let me just use parallel. And I said I want this surface to be parallel with this surface. Okay. Now you say check. All right. Now it stays in that position, which is parallel. Okay. Everything is good to go. Beautiful. All right. So, so far, so good. Next, I'm going to put uh, two uh, ISO washer on here okay one on this side and one on this side okay ready so we're gonna bring two washers and the textbook it shows one washer no it shows us two washers okay yeah i'm, I'm seeing two washers on page uh, figure 10-55 so i will have um assembly and then i'm gonna bring the washer which is an iso okay not the plain washer just double click and then you have that washer right here and then um, let me see if I could uh, just find the axis. Okay, let me move this a little bit uh, uh, closer here or, all right. So uh, I'm going to show you that uh, this is going to be coincide with this surface here. So automatic first, you're gonna click on the axis and then that has to be aligned with that axis. Then you go to coincident, and then you coincide. Um, you coincide that surface, okay, that surface, uh, and then coincide this with this surface here, and then you flip it, okay? You flip that. All right, so you flip that, and that's good to go, and it's fully constrained. So beautiful, okay? So we have the washer attached to this, uh, where do you have the bushing, okay? All right, so so we're gonna bring another. Uh, I, uh, washer which is ISO 7090 and double click and then we can go to um, again uh, let me see if I can move this to this side here and now um, and I'm going to uh, uh, click on um, align okay this axis here okay always zoom it so you can see it okay align with this axis and next we're going to go coincident. Uh, and let me just move this a little bit away from there so we can see it. 
So then I'm going to have uh, coincide that surface and then coincide with or mate in previous edition or first uh, crew primary, the first point, second point, they should say mate or pro E uh, and solid works. Maybe they say mate coincident with this surface here. Okay. And that is uh, checked. All right. So we have the uh, the two we have the two ISO washer uh, positioned nicely is constrained. And next we're gonna bring the bolt, okay? And then we can click on that. We have a bolt and that bolt, we're gonna just, uh, we go from left to right, okay? From left to right. So we click on this axis, align with this axis here. And then I'm going to create uh, um, or go to coincident and I will uh, rotate them a little bit like that and then click on that surface. And I want that surface uh, to coincide with the surface of the washer, okay? That washer, okay? And you can see that is nicely positioned. See that here? Beautiful. So now we can just say, um, okay. All right, fully constrained, okay. Uh, excellent. Next, we're going to bring uh, number four, which is a castle knot, okay? We're gonna bring the castle knot um, and that castle knot is uh, already created. So we're gonna bring the castle knot and that castle knot, I'm going to bring it all the way up. So you can see that that's a castle knot and uh, I'm going to have a line, okay? The axis of the castle knot uh, let me see if I can see this better. Okay, the axis. Um, for some reason, I am not uh, really comfortable with this because, uh, oh, the axis is right here. Okay, so we're gonna click on this axis and then uh, align with uh, this axis here. And then we're gonna go and say coincident. We're gonna coincide this surface here. We're gonna coincide uh, that with this surface of the washer, okay? And I'll, I'm, I have to say coincident, okay? Beautiful. And that is a uh, fantastic, okay? So we have that nicely done. Is, is that the castle knot? Yeah, that's a castle knot, yeah. So number four in the, in the, in the bill of materials, it says uh, castle uh, is not self-locking knot, it's castle knot, okay, excellent. So now that we have the top portion done, now we go to the bottom portion and we're gonna bring the bra uh, bracket. So we're gonna bring the bracket and that bracket, it's this al axis aligned with the axis of the shaft okay this shaft here and then we go to quin uh, coincident so we want to coincide this surface and then coincide that with this surface here okay okay nicely done and then maybe i'm gonna just give one more constraint for this to be parallel to that so i'm gonna go to placement and then new constraint and then we go to maybe i'm going to use fix okay fix or parallel doesn't matter okay we say parallel so we want this to be parallel to that okay and then we check all right beautiful so this is already done uh very nice and next we're gonna bring um let me just put a color in here maybe we can put a uh, blue color on uh uh, not this one. Oh, maybe different color. Okay. Uh, this will be uh, maybe a red. Oh, okay. It's going to change everything. So I'm going to just leave it like that. Okay. Just leave it like that. So next, I'm going to bring the washer. Okay. We're going to have the washer. So we have two more components. Okay. So we'll click on the assembly. We're going to go to regular washer. And that washer is going to be aligned the axis of this washer. Just zoom it so you can see the axis, okay? And then it will be aligned with that. And then we say, um, 
let me just if I move this a little bit here and then we go to coincident coincident and I'm going to coincide that surface and that coincide when it will coincide with that surface so beautiful all right so we have that and let me see if I have maybe a um, and maybe this color here okay all right so so we have that and next the last one is called the uh, self-locking knot okay the self-locking knot which is this here and we're going to click on this axis and click on this axis and then we can say coincident and we're going to coincide uh, let me just uh, flip it uh, I think it should be the other way around okay so I'm gonna flip that so I'm going to coincide this surface here and then coincide that with and the surface of the washer okay and then we say check so everything is good to go okay so that is the uh, assembly or we call it the shock assembly all right so everything is nicely done you can see that and this is the front view and this is the top view and this is the right side view okay perfect and this is the isometric okay this may be like that okay now we're gonna go and and save this okay we're gonna save I have a folder called the shock assembly for me okay if you can just have like have, you have the folder called the project one and and uh, but I just call it the shock assembly so I have the assembly so okay so it's already safe now that I have saved it and my folder if I go and open the folder I have the assembly that's right there if you hover over the uh, the tab or the the solid uh, model that represent the Creo file and it shows you what that is okay and then it should go bolt you hover over it and it says bolt and, and bracket and this is bushy this is um, a castle knot and this is a drawing I have a sheet of drawing I have a pivot I have um, a, a, a self locking knot now oh, okay and then we have use support I have washer I have a, a, a ISO washer okay great so um, uh, now I want to show you how to create exploded view okay just uh, be patient I'm going to show you uh, step by step exploded view you click on exploded view and now uh, don't worry about this okay so all you have to go and do the edit okay edit position and now you click on this here and then horizontally you push it to the left and then you can have uh, uh, the washer just horizontally don't lift it up now okay and then um and this one here we go here okay and then i'm going to uh, bring um uh, uh, let me see i'm gonna just take uh this uh the, okay click on it and move it a little bit to the uh to the right and then you click on this one you uh, move it a little bit somewhere here temporary okay temporary and then you're going to move this one here to somewhere here in the middle okay somewhere there and now we're going to do a little bit of adjustment okay so i'm going to have the um bushing first okay i'm going to bring the bushing first which is here and the measure uh, and the, uh, the distance from one component and next component is is a proportionality by i okay and you can see that um and this is a distance from this bushing to here and this they're approximately the same and then i'm going to just move maybe a little bit i'm going to move the um uh, uh, that is castle knot okay Cast a knot a little bit of a space and then my uh the bolt is also okay maybe i'm gonna bring a little bit of washer a little bit closer 
and then I'm gonna bring you know you click on it and then you can bring uh, you can bring the uh, uh, what do we call that uh, the bolt okay we're gonna move it a tiny bit okay this is all good now if you wanted to lift uh, all these components one two three four five six seven component this is what we do we're gonna click on one component and then hold the control button down okay hold it down and then a little bit zoom so you can click on it so we click that means you're selecting okay and then i'm going to select this one and then i'm going to select this one i'm going to select this one and then uh finally select that one then by holding the you know pushing down the control and, and the button on the keyboard and then you can just grab the vertical axis and left them okay simultaneously so you don't want it to left this one by one because the axis will be different, will be off, okay? So that's good enough. That much left is okay. And then I'm going to maybe um, just uh, move this a little bit down, okay? A little bit down, just a tiny bit. And then uh, one more thing that I need to do is just maybe move this a little bit lower because in exploded view, we want all the components to be visible so somebody that is trying to assemble all these pieces they can see every component that are uh located nicely with a echo distance and, and so on okay all right so that's beautiful so that's what we have in here and if this is um great all right this is what you see this is um, good uh everything is good to go i'm going to uh say check i'm going to click on check now this is the critical part okay you need if you don't save it according to this procedures when you go back to exploded view and asset exploded view and assembly it will collapse okay all the pieces will collapse which is no good you're going to waste all this time so i'm going to go to manage view and then we're going to go here and we click on explode okay we're going to click on explode and then default make sure it's default don't give any other name automatically it's going to give you default explore click on edit say save and then it says is default explode is okay yes and then it says update yes and then close now uh, if you click on exploded view it's going to go back to assembly just watch okay it's going to go to assembly if you click on exploded view again it's going to give you the same thing that we did because we save it under the manage view okay and the manage view every time you make any changes or any uh, edit and um, uh, any um, you want to change the spacing you can just go through the same thing procedures to make sure to update it okay like i'm going to show you one in here say if i wanted to bring these component all a little bit down okay so i'm going to go edit edit position i'm going to click on uh one control then control two uh three uh four five six uh seven and then you just bring it down a little bit okay all right so that's good and then we say check all right now that we did some changes we edit that we go back to manage view it's already uh default okay just it says edit you say save it says default yes it says update you say yes and then close okay everything is good to go now uh you don't need to save this on your folder because exploded views is integral part of the assembly so you don't need to worry about saving again this save is important because i wanted to transfer this exploded view to a sheet of a drawing called b size paper okay and then i can show you the bill of materials and uh, how to create bill of materials or table uh, and also balloons all right so uh if i go to uh assemble that's assemble and this is exploded views okay if when you are doing it if this is crumble or all kinds of you know it just you know it will crash and that means you didn't do the save this manage view save correctly or you did not have the proper constraint and all that if it's if this pivot uh is 
flipping because you didn't uh, impose the third constraint called parallel, something like that. So I think this looks like isometric, like that. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, say, I'm gonna move them around until I have an angle. Okay, that angle. And then I'm gonna go to save orientation. I'm gonna say reorient. I'm gonna call it view name. You can call it any name, any type of uh, file name you, got, or you want for that position of the exploded view because we wanna transfer it to a uh, sheet of a drawing, okay? So I'm gonna call it uh, a mo, okay? Uh, mo, and then make sure you save it, okay? You save it, okay? So save, and then okay. And now we go to, we, we're gonna open new, we're gonna say drawing, okay? Drawing, and then we call it uh, bill of materials, okay? Maybe a bill of, uh, a bill of uh, mater material, Okay, that's the name of this exploded view and a sheet of a, a B-size paper, bill of material, and then I'll go OK, and then empty with format, browse. We're gonna use B-size paper, okay, B-size paper. Uh, for mechanical drawing, you use C-size paper. All right, okay. And now we have this um, B-size paper. We're gonna go general view, and you say default, not no combine. You say default all. Okay, and then you click on this area here, and then you can see that we have the same thing. If you want to look for Mo, yes, yet you have the Mo because I save it under Mo. So I'll go okay, so it looks better. You see that here? It looks better. The orientation is better. So I'm gonna I'm going to maybe if you wanted to right click and, and unlock the view movement so you can. Uh, oh, I see, it was already unlocked. So let me just select again and say unlock it so you can move it to different location. All right, so is that cool? And now if you wanted to scale it a little bit bigger, double click, you say scale, custom, scale, and we're gonna say 0 0.005. Let's see how it works, uh, how it looks like, okay? And this is a little bit too, too large. Uh, mm, yeah, I'm gonna make it, 0 0.004, okay. Scale, we're gonna go 0 0.004, and that will be, that's better, okay. Let me just get rid of this. All right, so now this is what we have in here. I'm gonna create a table or bill of materials, okay. Put your seat belt on, and we're gonna do this, okay. We go to table, and then click on table, and then we say table, and then it says insert table, okay. Insert table. And then it says four by two. That means we have four columns and two rows for time being. Yes. Okay. And then we're going to position it somewhere here. Okay. So I'm going to give um, uh, maybe um, item numbers. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just uh, make it a little bit. I'm going to modify the bill of material uh, the, the way that the book has. I'm going to change that to uh, here. I'm going to call it, you know, I'm going to double click on here. Uh, okay, double click on here, uh, and then we're going to type index, okay, index, capital letters, or we call it item numbers, okay, or index. And then you just, uh, and here we say QTY, QTY dot, means quantity. Click outside the table, so you can just start from here. We say name or part number or we call it description or name, okay? Name or description of the part. And then if you wanted to um, make this uh, a little bit in the middle, okay, so that is, or you can say center. Okay, beautiful. All right, so next I'm gonna just put, uh, I'm gonna click on here, we say material, okay, material. All right, so beautiful. So we have four columns and two rows. Now we are going to uh, use uh, uh, something called, we go to repeat region. Okay, we go repeat region. And that is, a, okay, we go repeat region. And then we say add. Okay, we say add. And then we click on, uh, 
we click on on uh, this here uh, add uh, let me see if I go to repeat region and then it says add we're gonna click on uh, I wanted to see if I can click on uh, and this or oh, add so you click uh, once you know you click once underneath the index okay so you see a little circle up here jump over the quantity under the name you click twice okay once twice you see little circle appears and then you say done okay that's all you have to do if you wanted to adjust the column width you need to go to underneath here it says general it says table column and then if i click on here uh uh, I'm going to change that to, say, 0.75, okay, three-quarter. And then I'm going to make the quantity also the column width 0.75, okay. And I'm going to uh, double-click on here, and I'm going to have 2.5 for uh, the name because it's a little bit, you know, uh, uh, the length is, it should be more or the width should be more for the name. And then the materials is fine, okay? The materials is fine. So now, don't forget to change the table column to general. All right, so now if you want, uh, uh, all right, so uh, if you want to generate the table now, you say uh, repeat region, and then you go to attributes, okay? Uh, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. So this is what I'll do. I'm going to double click on here. I'm going to double cl uh, double click on here and I'll say index, okay? And I'm going to say I'm going to click on um and let's see what happened to the index. Uh index is assemble uh it should say index, okay? And let me see if I click on here it should say line materials middle repeat Oh, RPT, okay, I also say RPT, then I'll say index. Then I'm going to click under the quantity, double click, and I'll say repeat. I will say QTY, quantity. Then under the name, I will say ASMB, ASM, member by name, okay, by name. All right, don't worry about the materials, okay, the, the cell under uh, the materials. So do not worry about that. Then you go to repeat region. And you click on attributes and you highlight the attribute you, you come back here and you click on see it is highlighted this this a cell this cell and that just click anywhere inside okay just a click and then you say no duplicate and then done and return okay you see all this information and we say done uh if you wanted to just put the materials you just say note okay you go to uh annotate you say note uh, or or I'm sorry uh, you just go back to table and I'm gonna double I'm gonna just uh, uh, type s uh, let me see if I can okay I'm gonna say steel and then say okay uh, steel whatever you want you know and maybe you say uh, bracket uh, this is S, oops, okay, S, T, L, and do the same thing in here. I you have to click outside and then come back here and say steel. And, okay, oh my God. Okay, just say this. Uh -huh, okay. And then, um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, say um, I'm gonna just give the same name okay so I say all just to co uh, complete that because we uh, it, we don't know the material so I just making this up all right so uh, then this uh, maybe if you want to say uh, uh, this is come on uh, S T E L and then I'm going to say aluminum, okay, for the washer, maybe. I'm going to say uh, AL for aluminum. And then 
and then this is a aluminum. Okay, so now that we have the bill of materials, and then it says uh, index one or part number one, it's a bolt. So let's go to create a uh, create balloons. Okay, where it says number five, create balloons. Say create balloons all. So you have all this. Um, you have the balloons automatically positioned there. And if you wanted to adjust them a little bit, you have, it's up to you. You can just make it a little bit more uh, organized if you want, okay? So uh, just click on it and then you can just tilt it a little bit, okay? So tilt it and then this is, all right, so. And then you can just, uh, you know, put your information on the title block and I leave it up to you to do that. I think this is what, what I wanted to show you on a B-sized paper. We have a, uh, exploded views that we created on here. See, that that's a, you know, that's exploded views and this is uh, assembly. All right, so, and then you can just click on it again. That's exploded view. And if we go to this sheet of papers, you got the exploded view of blood materials and the blue and then put your information on here, okay? All right, on the title block. I think I'm done with this work. I hope this was uh, educational, this was informative, and uh, just subscribe to my um, YouTube uh, uh, videos and put some comment in there to see if you really was easy to follow my instructions here, okay? Thank you. All right, see you on the next video.